Hey, this is Kyle with another Cinema 4D tutorial from Fireside Media. If you like this tutorial, please like and subscribe. The download file should be in the info section of this video. So let's get started. So most renders in Cinema 4D end up looking like this. It's quite flat, the shadows are pretty dark, there's high contrast, there's no um, smooth lighting. It's It looks like a digital render. It doesn't look like it was done in a photography studio or anything. It looks like 3D. So what we need to do is get away from using actual lights in this program. Like here we have our light but it has it has area shadows selected but it's still creating this effect I mean if we were to go say with hard lighting it would look worse but I mean if you have to render something quite fast this 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 is okay but what we want to do is create a studio inside of our computer so that our light so that our scene looks professional and is ready to give to our our client so we're gonna start off by um, creating a psych wall a cinema 40 psych wall so that our light can bounce correctly oh, what am I doing here okay I'll just create that again but so I'm gonna create a plane and I'm gonna take the segments down to one so we have one solid plane to work with here and um, I mean there's lots of ways to do this but this is how I do it so we take this um, gonna subdivide it we could have added that back there but I didn't I'm gonna take this section and I'm going to move it up and he, we, here we have our, our little lean-to and now so we can get uh, a rounding effect I'm gonna add a hypernerves to this and you see it's adds a nice little corner here and to get this so that um, it's not completely rounded and so that there's more of a plane at the bottom let's subdivide it again and again and we have our nice corner here now let's take this uh, rotate the object uh, rotate the plane scale it and then drop it so that it becomes our new floor push it back and we've got a psych wall okay now that we have our psych wall let's get rid of the floor okay floor is gone and now we have our scene kind of creates a nice little gradient behind it now let's switch to not using lights at all so we're gonna come here and use global illumination now global illumination takes um, any luminescent uh, object material and lights the scene with it and so if we have a really white object it'll just create a soft area around it now we're going to render and it takes longer to render but we're going to render and then see nothing because we have no lights now I've already set up in these materials lights so this is pretty much a luminescent material here all you need to do is click here click luminance check it and then select any color or whatever make add a texture so once we add this and then render get this render settings out of the way it starts to light our scene with our our material
and it creates a nice soft glow and it looks really cool and professional so now so um, now I'll turn on my other luminance so now that we have this it looks cool and all but now we need to actually light our scene because some some scenes like this you know won't have luminant materials so I'm going to create a cube and these are going to be our overhead lights let's drop this down add some fillet 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 I feel like it's French okay now we have here our cube now I'm gonna add a luminant material let me just delete that and create a new one so you know what you're doing create this luminance here that's about all you need so we take our cube here we make it smaller and then we add um, I'll just add a MoGraph cloner to make a bunch of these guys create an object null so we can move our cube independently and then create a grid array now grid array makes a huge grid so we're just going to use one layer one by three now spread these out it's got some cool lights going on I like it so now we're going to move it up and use a yeah move it up and then render our scene and it again it takes a while to render but you now you see the whole scene is being being lit now and we say, oh that's that's great but it's it's kind of dark also we see here in our reflection we start to see these lights and that that's what really that's what really adds the realism to this that there is indeed a light and we can see it being reflected and a problem with this though is that your speculars will not be shown that's you have to add lights as well as this if you want your specular otherwise you can fake it with a reflection that looks cool too so um, I'm also going at this point to I can't do it there increase my light size because I'm not that happy with the reflections and then over here you can move around also I like to um, oops I'm pulling on the wrong thing that is why. I, I like to um, add a keyframe to my camera just so like if I go oh and I bump the camera I can just hit play and I'll go back to where I had it and that uh, that's an amazing feature but um, now I lost my train of thought okay render settings <laughs> global illumination okay so this is taking a while to render so I want to come in here if you're going to be doing test renders you don't want to be waiting around all the time so come in here set these to lower and then you can bump it up for when you have your your render that's super high quality and see that that speeds it up a lot now I'm going to since this is this is lit well and you see the reflections are looking cooler now but this is lit well but I want it to be lighter so if you come in here to your luminance this is like your brightness right here so I'm gonna bring this up and if you're using a texture or something you should just use that texture as a multiply use that mix mode and select multiply uh, otherwise this this part right here isn't gonna work so now let's go 200 and now test how bright that is see that that brightens it a lot more it's kind of overpowering right now so let's um, let's move this down about 150 that's looking pretty cool so now um, I'd also like to come over here our psych wall is quite close let's move that back a bit scale it up Um, our lights, I kind of want to move them back so that we have 
more reflection in all of this. It's all about tweaking, depending on your object. Just tweak it around. That's the wrong screen. Just tweak it around so it looks right to you. Then you kind of end up with a pretty cool thing here. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And you notice with your luminance, um, each thing is, is casting a luminant color. And it's, it's really adding to the scene. I kind of want to add depth of field just to make this look even more real. Let's edit render settings and um, go to your camera and then details. Um, this will be different for different versions instead of Cinema 40, but I'm going to add, oh, they're already here. I'm going to add these in, make sure these are checked, and then you kind of move this around until you get a right. See right in the middle here is where your subject is, this line, and then these are, are where your uh, where it starts to blur, so kind of gradients between these. These are really hard to figure out. Um, there's kind of new options with the physical camera, but then you've got to learn a lot more for that as well. Um, just play around with that. Um, we're going to go into uh, render settings, edit render settings, and then add um, depth of field, if I can find it depth of field and now when you render after it's done rendering it will create depth of field in the back and you, you can't really see that happening that much here but it happens around the back you can you know tweak it whatever so yeah that's how to make a, a pretty realistic render this renders pretty fast you can pump it up pump up the quality and it'll it'll look a lot better so this is Kyle with another fireside media tutorial on cinema 40 uh, don't forget to like and subscribe alright see you guys later bye